Charlie, my husband Lee.
there's a, a couple of pieces of equipment down there, old, another member of our club, Marty Fields just arrived. Uh, old uh, enlargers and, and things of that nature, old chemicals uh, that uh, uh, have to be disposed of one way, shape, or form, and uh, it's not much more than a storage room for frames right now. Uh, and uh, I guess uh, uh, a, a, a side note to that is that when it rains here, it floods in the dark room. Right. And uh, I've heard some stories of water up to our knees. <laughs> there you're the one. Okay. The yeah, door wouldn't open. <laughs> yeah, the door wouldn't open hardly, no, would not. Lucky enough, was strong enough to push it. When I got outside, like say the water had been gushing down those steps to the place underneath the theater there, and the water was up to my knees out. Oh. If you if you go to the auditorium, the amphitheater, and you look carefully underneath the uh, uh, stage on the front, and maybe even underneath the uh, the platform that, that comes out from the stage, you'll see a couple of windows, and that's where our car room is. Uh, we would be delighted to uh, uh, close it up and offer it to someone else for some practical purpose. We don't use the anymore. Uh, I started my work with uh, uh, digital photography somewhere around 1998, perhaps 96, and uh, uh, with with Photoshop, which I'm sure every member here has, every photo, photographic arts club member has, and. Um, uh, now I never, I've never seen, I've never used a dark room per se, uh, and uh, I'm sure that uh, uh, some of the people that are coming into uh, the photography profession uh, uh, may get some experience in college, but that's about all because of the uh, uh, use of the computer, which I think is a, is the reason for the change of the name from photography club to photographic art. Because with the use of the computer, you can change your picture. You can you can make an art uh, rendering out of it, or you can add a person, or take a person out, or do all kinds of things. Uh, there was a movie along that line a number of years ago. I don't recall the name of it, but but it was uh, picturing uh, 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 historical scenes with other characters placed in the middle for one purpose or another, and we do the same thing. And I'm, I'm not here to, you know, promote Photoshop or, or anything of that nature, but uh, the whole scheme of photography has changed quite a bit since that time. And uh, we're having a lot of fun. The advantage, of course, is that you can do all your uh, photography at home. You have a digital camera, and you plug it in, you, you uh, connect it to the computer. All of a sudden, you have on your screen your photograph, and you have the tools to move pixels around and uh, change the, the image in one way, shape, or form. Uh, some people will take uh, one, two, three, four pictures and merge them together, uh, and others will take one picture and blur up the uh, pixels to make it look like a, a watercolor or a, uh, uh, a uh, impressions type of painting. There's a lot of things that can be done that way. That's what we're doing. And uh, that's what we encourage uh, other members of the community to do. Our club meets on, on Thursday at 1.30 for our official business meeting, the second Thursday of the month. But at 1 o'clock we meet for a technical session of one kind or another. I, I get about one or two phone calls a, a month asking for help uh, with their new visual cameras. <laughs> Uh, they, they, they can't get the, the memory card out, <laughs> or they uh, uh, can't figure out exactly what to call it, and, and they refer to the film in their camera, they used up all the film in their camera, uh, and, and we, have a kick, we get, get a kick out of that, but by the time that the person leaves the uh, meeting, about half an hour later, or stays for our whole show, they're well informed. We have a lot, we have a lot of very good people, uh, technically uh, uh, valuable, technically trained, who can lead the way into getting this person into the digital world. Uh, I'm not sure where I heard this, and I'm not sure if it's exactly accurate, but somebody told me that they had three or four digital cameras. Uh, and uh, and the reason that they have that many is that they used up the film in there. Oh, the first one. <laughs> <laughs> and they didn't realize that it's a, it's a uh, replaceable <laughs> memory card, so they bought a buy another camera. <laughs> <laughs> Whether or not it's true, it makes a good story.
we uh, go around the table as uh, we would do here, and everybody says that they were in this place or that place over the last month, and we took this picture or that picture, and and uh, if uh, the timing was correct, we would bring the picture to the meeting. Originally, uh, at the first one or two meetings I went to, we had critiques where we had maybe six people there and about a dozen pictures, and we go around pointing out where the pictures could have been improved, or, or why didn't you do this, or why didn't you do that, and uh, uh, we've kind of left that uh, formal critique uh, to just a matter of showing where we've been, and how we're doing, and then we pick a, a monthly winner. I think that um, uh, part of the reason that uh, we don't do the critique, formal critique anymore, is that we have too many pictures and too many people, and it would just take too long. And I say that in the sense that when I joined, we had maybe six, eight members, uh, ten members maybe, and, and six to eight would show up at a regular meeting. And we have maybe 15, meeting, uh, 15 members showing up now. Double the attendance, but double the time going around discussing what we're doing and answering the questions and things of that nature. So it does take more time, and we are limited for an hour and a half. And uh, uh, generally speaking, we, we get to a quarter to three, ten to three, when we have to leave, to decide what we're going to do for our uh, uh, photograph of the month and what subject we might be choosing for the following month. As, as, if anybody here is a member of the Art League, you know, they have a very formal program for the entire year. They, they have their speakers come in and they have their topics all lined up at the beginning of the year. And generally speaking, about five minutes before we uh, close our meeting, we choose the topic for the next meeting. We're not quite as organized as they are, but it seems to work out pretty well. And then uh, uh, there's always the, uh, the, the one person that's off topic that's got such an outstanding picture that you just can't turn it down as, as the, the choice for the month. The art uh, has, uh, has the uh, has has their paintings hanging on the walls in Lookouts 3, and we have a little side wall where we keep our uh, photographs, not quite as uh, formal perhaps as theirs, but we do choose one picture of the month, and then uh, everybody else can leave any of their pictures on the wall as long as they so choose and as long as it doesn't fade. And uh, I say that uh, facetiously because as you probably know, digital photography has come along, digital printing has come a long way since uh, the art of uh, uh, painting many, many years ago because the, uh, with, with the uh, proper choice of paper and ink, pigment ink, uh, we can claim something like 200 years of uh, uh, vivid colors. Uh, and uh, I think everyone here has got a black and white picture, and maybe a colored picture of, of uh, one of their uh, elderly relatives taken many years ago. And uh, the colors faded, or the pictures faded, or Theoretically, that's not going to happen anymore with the digital uh, era and the uh, pigment ink printing that is available for everybody. A printer has an advent to a, a digital camera uh, costs about 100 bucks up to $5,000 if you want to spend that kind of money and make large pictures. But it's available uh, uh, to everybody in one way, shape, or form, cost-wise. And the same with digital cameras. You can buy digital cameras now for uh, 100 bucks or so with as many uh, pixels, like eight or nine pixels, as the, uh, the, the more famous uh, digital SLR cameras of uh, two or three or four years ago. The, the technology of digital photography is amazing, amazing and it's advancing at a very rapid pace. Uh, today, you can buy a, a, a small little camera like that, point and shoot camera with as many pixels, and, and uh, uh, by pixels I mean the, the resolution for uh, enlarging the ability to enlarge uh, uh, is, is controlled by the number of pixels. And these little cameras now are as good as the, the uh, large digital uh, single lens reflex cameras that uh, most of us own or have owned in the past. How many people here actually have a little camera or a big camera that that uh, they take around and they 
because I heard there was a dark room here. So um, I had an enlarger and a lot of other equipment. And um, I brought it all the way from New York and brought it to Nijua. So we had another enlarger. Um, I didn't exactly enjoy going down the steps under the stage and into the dark room because it was gloomy and scary. But I did it for several years, printing black and white negatives and color negatives. And oh, the smell, oh God, <laughs> it's terrible. I'm sure it was poisonous, you know. We didn't think about that or we refused to. So when digital came in, I was very, very pleased, gave up my enlarged down in the dark room, which was a very good dark room, and uh, did my pictures with my um, digital camera. And I have owned, well, no, at one point I had about eight cameras. I'm down to one. And uh, I, a couple of years ago, got rid of my last film camera because I wasn't using it. And I was never going to uh, work in the dark room again. But it was a very nice dark room under the stage just a little bit spooky, <laughs> really was. And um, I used to call my husband quite often, say, I'm here, I'm here. So some didn't know where I was. But um, I enjoyed it. But I enjoyed digital even more. Okay, and I think our club was a very nice club. I wish we had more members, uh, but I enjoyed making pictures. I just enjoy taking the camera out, making pictures, and bringing them back, and seeing what I can do to bring out what I saw in it, but might not show up on the screen. Okay. Thank you. I think I've talked enough, and we have any questions from the audience here. Anybody have any questions or any comments that they'd like to add? I don't have this a question. Up. I'm a member of the Photography Photographic Arts Club, but we also have speakers. As me, as me, and we had a wonderful, we've had a couple of wonderful speakers that I don't know who met. I think John gets them. A couple of other members get them, and they're very interesting. And I just want to say I'm a relatively new member, and I do have a little bit of a background in photography. But what I enjoy is the camaraderie. I enjoy um, the technical knowledge of some of the people. I always learn something. And I think some people are scared away because they think it's too technical for them. But you know, that's the way you learn. So if you're interested, come on by. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions, comments? Uh, uh, Isabel did bring up one other item that I probably should talk about. Uh, as you all know, in the digital world, with computers, with photography, and other things, we're, we have a, a plethora of manuals. And uh, uh, these manuals are written by people like you and I uh, sitting at home uh, with a little more knowledge of what they're writing than we do. Uh, and, and we have had uh, an uh, author of uh, books on Corrupt Painter and uh, Adobe Photoshop. Uh, we expect to have them back. Uh, they've been both entertaining and uh, informative. Uh, last month we had a forensic photographer uh, talk about uh, his tasks of uh, photographing crime. And uh, who knows what we'll have next. Uh, it's, it's a very good learning experience for even the uh, hardened professional photographers, uh, but it's especially valuable for those people just entering the digital world. And uh, I thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, I want to thank you, and I want to, as, as a uh, memorandum, but uh, I remember you for coming to us. Here's a, here's a cup for you. I'm sure you
Rainy Bell Beach. Yes. It'll be fab. It's called the Joy Bell. That's what it's going to be called. Now, I don't know enough about it yet. I'm on the, um, one of the people that's going to help do it. But we also have a place where we're going to be right by the red car. And we've invited, uh, I've invited Tom and the Historical Society to come down and display some of your stuff. You have any, uh, not stuff, but pictures. <laughs> pictures and, you know, what you like to display. And um, I was hoping we could get as many of you down there as possible. I don't know if you'd like to, and maybe the photography club would come down and, um, you know, just come, come down and look at it. Anyway, that's what I'd like to see, hopefully. So um, just put it on your calendar for 10 10. Sorry. How does your museum open? Um, our museum now is open um, every other Saturday from 12 to 3. Uh, we are trying to open on Sundays if we have the docents. Um, during this 10-10-10, we're going to be opening from 11 o'clock in the morning to I think 5 o'clock. So there's plenty enough time to do all that, you know, come down and see us. I think it's going to be fun. I think you're going to enjoy it. But, um, you know, hopefully you'll have some time. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ryan. We we got we definitely I talked some of the board. We definitely look forward to taking part in and, and uh, the advertising in in, in in our publication. I'm sure you can take a look at the stories. But we'll look forward to coming down doing it. these things to forever. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I want to thank Gene and, and Bernard got me out this morning. And uh, Charlie was a trigger guest at the highlights. But thank you all very, very much for coming. And we'll look forward to seeing you for Hula and, and the next ice cream. Thank you.